Hi folks, it's Myrna and Neil from ECS Coffee and we are back at home in our kitchen. What are we doing today, Neil? We're doing Smeg today. So we're reviewing the Smeg uh, toaster. We have the four slot here, the kettles, the standard and the variable temperature kettles, the drip coffee machine, and the Smeg espresso machine. Now Smeg, what does Smeg stand for, Myrna? Let's read it from Wikipedia itself because <laughs> it's kind of an odd name. It's an Italian company um, these machines are made in the People's Republic of China, um, but it's Italian design and it stands for, it's actually uh, founded by Vittorio Bertazzoni in 1948 in the town of Guastalia, Reggio, Emilia, Italy. <laughs> Wonderful. I know. Uh, the, name, the name is an acronym for Smalteri, I'm trying to do this in Italian, <laughs> Smalteri Metallurgische Emiliane. Guastala. Oh, and he speaks Italian. <laughs> the, the Italian to the Italians, please forgive me. Which means um, Emilian Metallurgical Enamel Works of Guastala in yes. English. So that was my terrible attempt at what SMEG stands for. Uh, believe it or not, we're going to go through all of these for Myrna's going to give you these features. Uh, at ECS Coffee, we are actually really proud that we actually are usually the first to bring things to the Canadian market. Uh, we were the first to bring one of the first, almost the first, I like to say the first, to bring Nespresso, Keurig, Vitamix, uh, Smeg, and a whole bunch of other brands to the, mar to the Canadian market. We search these around the world, we bring them in. They typically then become mainstream a couple years after. So we've had a lot of experience selling Smeg at ECS Coffee. And I can kind of go over some of the, the, um, the challenges and some of the things you might want to think about before you purchase Smeg. Um, these four or five units here are actually customer returns that we will then sell as open box and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. I'll explain why people will return these and some things you should think about before you buy this for your kitchen counter. So we'll let Myrna take it away. We're gonna start with the four slice toaster. Very exciting. Four slot toaster. Four slot, because there is another one and it's fatter and uglier and we don't carry that one. <laughs> uh, it takes up way too much space. So we'll start with the four slot and go from there. So this Smeg um, toaster comes in three different types. There's the two slice, the four slice, and the four slot, which is what we have now. And you can toast basically different sizes of bread from regular toast to the farmhouse loaves to the bagels. Ooh, very exciting. I know. I know. Baguettes. It's not a lot you can say about a toaster. It <laughs> makes bread into toast. But what are the key features of this mag toaster, Myrna? Well, super simple. It has a uh, defrost function, a button on the side here, so you can actually put frozen toast in there and uh, defrost it and then toast it. You can adjust the browning levels to up to six different browning levels by this little knob here. And then there is the infamous bagel button oh. that only toasts one side of the bagel. The controversial bagel button. Well, why is it controversial? Well, this toaster was actually returned to us by someone that said so it wasn't working because it toasted the wrong side of the bagel. <laughs> okay, might have just, so just, just you know, put, turn. put it this way put it, and then yeah. it toasts the right to, side. To the center because they had it the other way. So as I said before, it's now an open box item that we've had returned to us that was used once to toast a bagel. We actually suggested or thought of suggesting that the customer just turn Turn, turn the toaster <laughs> that way. But it was probably one of the funnier return requests that we had. So now someone can save some money on this said toaster. It all, does also have this nice clean out little popper, pop out here. Let's clean the crumbs out. Um, and fairly simple to use. It makes toast. There's nothing overly fancy about it. It does come with cool accessories though. So it has a, um, a bun warmer. So you, there's a little rack that goes on top so you can warm your croissants on top if you want. There's a multi-rack toast um, rack. So yeah, we don't care. Right? I don't know, but so we don't you, carry those yet at ECS. So oh. you've done your research. I'm trying to get them. So hopefully, you will have them, don't you? and yeah. then there's also this other. You can't get, one. If you can't get them at ECS, you can't get them anywhere. That's the way it is. Yeah, yeah. You can't but get there's them also this other one that um, it's a rack that opens up, and you just put the slices of toast and whatever right. you want in the middle, fold it up, and you can put it in and toast, and you can make a grilled cheese or like a croque monsieur madame. So clearly, we have to get those. So remember when I promised to make you a sandwich when you first got married? Do you have to get your toaster does, first? Does a grilled cheese count as a sandwich? It does, it does. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say another reason people will actually return these. They're great toasters. Uh, I mean, it's a toaster. Another reason people return these is they are a little larger than some, so you're about, if I was to it measure it. Toaster. Yeah, it's about 16 inches wide. Um, it is about nine inches tall, it's about eight and three quarters tall and the width of it, I'm gonna say, is about seven and a half. So keep that in mind if your counter space is a little tight. We have had some come back for that reason, that it was just too big, because that retro style is a little rounder than your standard toaster. So uh, overall though, 
you know, I've used them. They're, they're great, no real issues. Uh, there, there were some challenges on the first, uh, first series of toasters that came out that were fixed with the, with the middle. Um, we had a few come back originally with the middle not heating, uh, but that was a, a couple years ago. They seemed to have resolved that with Smeg. So, and it was, again, it was a very small percentage. So overall, really good quality, good build, and beautiful aesthetic, and great, it's the colors. It's the colors are gonna get you on that. So uh, let's move on to what's next. What are we gonna do next? The kettles. Finally get your sandwich. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, off to the kettles. <laughs> Next up is the Smeg Kettle Series. We have the regular kettle and the variable temperature kettle, both of which make water hot. <laughs> you sound so excited about these kettles, Neil. Well, it's a kettle. It's hard to review kettles, but let's go over some of the features and, and see what we like about the Smeg kettles. Well, the standard one is pretty standard. It has a 360 yep. swivel base and ergonomic handle. Ooh. It separates from the base so you don't have the cord attached when you're trying to uh, remove it. How many liters? 1.7 liters. On both, right? On both. It has a soft open and a filter. A little screen, although you're only supposed to put water in here, but I suppose if you get some scale, perhaps that would stop the scale from getting into your cup. Um, and a soft close. Soft close, yeah, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, a little gauge here on the, on the side here to let well, you know how much water is in it. Uh, and again, in a variety of colors, so really, really cool kettle. Just when you're looking, oh, you know what I like about the too is the raised lettering um, on the side here. They have raised lettering uh, on, on their products, which is really, really nice it as is. well. Nice little nice feature. So, but the better one, and if you're looking for some price comparisons, that needs, the better one is actually the variable temperature kettle. Why do we like that, Myrna? Why do I like that? Why do you like that? <laughs> well, I was born in Sri Lanka, so this girl from Ceylon likes her tea, and every tea connoisseur knows that you don't just boil a cup of tea. The, you need the sep uh, certain temperatures so that you can actually allow the tea to bloom and actually drink it at its best. So this tea drinker is very excited about the variable temperature kettle. So it has different temperatures right along the bottom here and this little toggle where you can increase or decrease the heat of the water and the lower, everyone knows, well almost everyone knows, almost. the lower temperatures are for the um, green and white tea, the mid temperatures for the oolong tea and the higher temperatures obviously for your black and herbal teas. It again has the same ergonomic handle, separates from the base. That's yeah, a little bit taller than the... the, the um, Just a little bit. Yeah, so the original one, the regular one is about 10 inches high and this guy's about, I'm gonna say 10 and three quarters high. So you get about another three quarters of an inch because the base is a little taller. The actual kettle is the same capacity inside, so. And another cool feature is when you have uh, turn the machine on and you set the temperature of how uh, hot you want it to be, if you press this uh, keep warm function, it keeps the temperature at that Sorry, the water at that temperature for about 40 minutes. Excellent. Now these two are, again, open box items that we have at ECS. They'll probably be gone by the time you look at this uh, video, but we do get them back. And for the love of God, I have no idea why they were returned. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, they're, they were just, sometimes people just don't like them or, or send them back. Um, every machine is tested by our tech if it comes back uh, and every, if there's a blemish on it, it is marked on our website with pictures of any blemishes that might be on these items before we actually sell them to the public. So it's, uh, everything's pretty transparent. So someone's gonna get, get a great deal on a couple of kettles. And, well, maybe. Black would match our kitchen, so I suppose. Let's uh, go over to the coffee machine next. <laughs> so <laughs> next up, what, where are you going? Press record? And repress record. I'm sorry. Checking to make sure we press record. So, so we're doing now. We're doing the espresso. No. No, that's that's behind us in the floor. Okay. We're doing the drip. Drip. Coffee. Drip coffee maker. Machine. Drip coffee maker by Smeg. By Smeg. Also by Smeg. Uh, this color is. I have no idea what this is called. Teal. Oh, it's. I can't remember. Funny enough, this is something to think about as everybody in 2020 is purchasing online. This came back because the, the customer said that the color wasn't the color that was on the, the picture online. Um, one thing that everybody should keep in mind in buying anything online, if you're looking at a specific color, is that screen resolutions and screens are all different. So what might appear to be a, a color that you're even watching, watching this video, to you, um, to me this looks a little minty, sort of mint greenish, I think you would call it. I'm not quite sure what the color is. We'll probably put that into the B-roll. Um, <laughs> but it might look more green or, or less green to you on your screen. So always keep that in mind that colors when you're purchasing something online, that goes for anything, 
your screen might be set to some different resolutions and, and, and colors than, than what the actual unit is. So this was returned for that reason. Again, nothing wrong with the machine, uh, but it is an open box. I think we found a scuff on it somewhere. Um, again, it will be highlighted online. So let's talk about this machine and the features of Myrna. We're not gonna brew coffee in it uh, because I actually don't wanna use it. It's gonna be sold to a customer. It's never been used, so let's not do that. But it is your standard drip coffee machine like anything you've known before, but a little sexy looking. So mm -hmm. let's go over it. Well, it's actually pretty simple. It has only four buttons in the front, so it's really not that hard to use. You have the on button, you have the brew function. You also uh, can brew only half a pot of coffee if you only want half a pot. And then a self timer, so you can set a time that you want this pot to start brewing. You can wake up in the morning and have either a full pot or a half pot of coffee. It also has an aroma button, so you can have a regular or stronger aroma, as they call it. And there is in the settings the ability to adjust for hard or soft water. Um, please though, do not use spring water in these machines. It will destroy them very quickly. Uh, but there is a, an indicator for that as well, which is in the instruction manual. Let's open it up. Yeah, well, if we open up the top, you end up you. You have a stainless steel permanent filter. For your coffee, and then the water gets poured into, into the back chamber here. Now, it's a 48 ounce pot. Now, let's, this, this is something, a pet peeve of mine. Uh, you can actually see on any coffee machine in North America, they'll say this is a 10 cup. I guarantee you when you go to the coffee shop, you're not getting 4.8 ounces of coffee when you ask for a cup of coffee to go. You're probably getting 10. So a 48 ounce pot is gonna get you about five cups of coffee realistically in North America. I'm not sure why they all do this to this day. Even machines that are made in North America, they all do this, they all say, 10 cup or 12 cup, but no one is actually um, drinking those small cups in North America. So keep that in mind. This machine is approximately 15 inches tall. Now, one thing and one reason that people will send this or any machine back is that it did not fit on their counter. What you have to do before you buy any coffee machine, any appliance that's gonna go on your counter is check the distance between your countertop and the cabinet above it particularly if you have a balance. Standard is about 17, but we have seen them shorter before. So keep in mind, this is built to fit under at, like I said, just 15, but when you press it to open, you gotta go up. Mm -hmm. So imagine at 17, you only get it up this far, so you are gonna have to pull this forward to fill it up with water. So something to keep in mind in any appliance, not just Smeg, uh, it's not something that's unique to them. This goes across the board. We have this uh, on a regular basis with people purchasing, particularly online in 2020, where they don't know that height different, that height in their, in their machine. So uh, anything else to talk about with the uh, coffee maker? Not that I know. Do you like this color? No. Some people do. Um, not for our kitchen. No. Not. But it's a very pretty color. Okay, we'll go with that. Uh, next, we'll go off to the espresso machine and that'll wrap it up. Now we're on to, finally, the Smeg espresso machine. This is actually a really easy machine to use for someone who's, again, a uh, amateur like I am, but when I make a coffee in it, it makes me look like a real uh, barista. Yeah, it's, it's designed for, I mean, it, it's a little higher price point for an entry-level machine, but you are paying again for the aesthetic with Smeg um, if you want something to really stand out on your counter. It reminds me a lot of the Delonghi Dynamica and a lot of its features. Uh, this was brought back to ECS Coffee, um, just to customer change their mind. Uh, it was actually in its full packaging, but we did actually find a little scratch on the drip tray here, so it's an open box um, and not a new machine. It has a what, one liter? One liter tank at the back, um, which is pretty good when you think that you're not making full-size coffees out of this really, you're more, more making espressos or cappuccinos. Um, so that's a pretty good size. It has a single, they're, they're pressurized baskets, so let's talk about what that means first. You get a single and a double and an ESC pod basket. This is the ESC pod basket right so here. So if you don't know, like I don't know, what that there's is. actually little pictures at the bottom. Yeah. It's a groove, uh, sorry, it's engraved in, so that's the ESC and that's, that's the a, one. You got the, the double, that's the double one and scoop the single's in here. Scoops. Yeah, basically if you want to make one espresso, you can use this one. If you want to make two, you can use this one, put the cup side by side. And if you want to use an ESE pod, um, which is a really simple way to make espresso, you don't have to, <laughs> that was my phone quacking. You don't have to pre-grind anything. It comes in like, it's almost like a little bit of a tea bag. Um, it goes right in, you can buy these. They're not coffee pods. You have to be specific when you say ESE, which stands for easy serve espresso. They have a little, they're about, about this size. They have a little tab on them. Uh, I'll try to get some for the B-roll. You just put it in and pop it right into the, into the uh, portafilter and in you go and off you go and make your coffee. 
Pressurized baskets mean that for coffee that you're buying at the grocery store, if you choose that, which we don't recommend, uh, it's a little more forgiving um, than a non-pressurized. So it's really a beginner's style machine. Uh, but it will make a decent espresso. It will give you some good froth out of your, your wand. Um, and how long does it take to heat up? So this machine has a thermal block heating system. So it's really quick to heat up. It takes about 40 seconds um, and it's ready to go. But it also has 12 seconds to heat up the steam function. So if you do That's have quick. to press it separately, um, if you do want steam, then that is to make your cappuccino. So it can go from making espressos to cappuccinos very, very quickly. Very quick. So if you want to make a cappuccino really, really easy, you make your coffee espresso with that. Pretend this is a milk jug, we don't know where the one is. It's manual, so you have to just put the wand in, manually press it down, it heats up for as long as you want. A little trick that Neil told me is that if you put your pinky at the bottom of the, the jug, and once you can't touch it anymore, that's when it's hot enough, and then you manually turn it off again. Although you wouldn't be using your mug to do that, you'd be using No, a, I know, we just yeah. didn't have a jug. We left I don't the, know where the jug is. We left the jug at the office. <laughs> you now, left the jug at the office, wasn't it? And it does seem that if you, if you take the portafilter, one of the challenges many... <laughs> that's my phone. I have a quacking thing. I don't even know what it is. You'll notice that the cup height's pretty short here. Um, again, because you're making espressos mostly, but you can actually remove the whole, the whole red doohickey there. So you actually have an additional... Um, you can put a bigger cup. Yeah, bigger cup for if you want to do lattes and stuff, which is actually a nice feature that they came up with. So, uh, nice machine. Again, it's aesthetically really nice. Makes a, a decent espresso. I'm not going to make it in this. We have had them before at our at our shop, uh, and it does work quite well. I'm not going to make it in this particular one and show you, uh, only because uh, I don't want to ruin this for, for the customer that will be buying it and actually put water through it. There's no need to for this particular video. We just wanted to give you an overview of the, the features and functions of the Smeg. You know something really dorky that I'm going to say right now? What's that? So you know those um, cheesy 80s and 90s science fiction movies? Yeah. So the drip um, container, the tongue pops out when it gets full and it looks like a robot. <laughs> Does it look like an 80s robot? You're a dork. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it looks like an 80s robot. <laughs> Cute. That, so it looks like a robot and an appliance from the 50s. Uh, overall, uh, I'm very happy with Smeg as a brand that we carry. Um, in our stores. Uh, I think you'll be happy with it. Once you oh, into the sizes on this one, we should measure it. Ah, we did it on the other ones. Let's do that first. So we are, how high are we? We are approximately 14 inches high. And we are about, well, not including the portafilter that's in there, we're about 14. Wow. And width wise, if I go right to the edge here, we're about, I'm going to say seven and a half uh, portafilter. This is a portafilter for those that don't know it. So that's what we're talking about when we say that. Uh, so nice and compact, nice for maybe a condo unit like this one if you wanted uh, an espresso machine. So anyway, uh, overall, if you're interested in Smeg, uh, please um, reach out to us at ECS Coffee. We have a ton of that in stock. Like everything in 2020, um, uh, inventory is tight as the worldwide demand for home coffee and espresso machines is, is really through the roof. And a lot of these guys are having trouble keeping up with demand. Uh, we have been buying in for, for a couple months now, um, our inventory in store. We have a lot of smeg. We get actually a delivery every week. There's a container coming into the country every week. So hopefully we'll have your, your item if you're looking for some of the holidays or if this is into 2021 and you're looking, please check us out at ECS Coffee. Uh, thanks for helping out on this, Myrna. Again, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> to listen to my nonsense. <laughs> well, Myrna's a nurse, <laughs> but it's always nice to have someone that's not in the business um, kind of look at these things and say, well, this is kind well, of cool. You're, what is, what is you've been in the business for so long. You're the coffee aficionado connoisseur and I'm the nurse, so I'm the coffee addict. So yeah, <laughs> between the much. two of us, we know a good cup of coffee. We'll get through it, yeah. <laughs> so um, again, if you liked this video, uh, please give us a thumbs up below. We appreciate it. And subscribe. We uh, have a lot of videos online, planning on doing a lot more, uh, as well as uh, tutorials on a lot of our machines in 2021, hopefully, on how to use a lot of this stuff. So it's one of our focuses for the new year. Um, and it was good seeing you guys. Thanks, Brenna. Thanks, Neil. Take care, everyone. Bye.